Good evening, everybody. It's old granddaddy coming at you again here. Uh, see if we can share a little more time together. I know every time I talk to you, I think about other things I want to say and other stories come to mind. I chase a lot of rabbit trails. I had uh, one little funny here that came to mind. I uh, had any plan to talk about it just now, but back, hey, if you follow this and you know that, uh, like everybody did back then, and out in the country in the rural areas, uh, my granddad and uncles and everybody, you know, farm, and doing whatever they could do to make a living, fishing, hunting, farming. Uh, granddaddy and uh, my uncle that I told you about that went in, got banged up in World War II. He was there that day, and uh, and a uh, hired man that worked with him some. I say hired back then, mostly. If somebody, if you had somewhere for somebody to lay their head at night and you fed them, and uh, and they had somewhere to wash their clothes, then that was. That would pay enough, because that's about all anybody got out of it anyway. But anyhow, there was three of them. And, because uh, this was back before my uncle was even grown good. He was just, you know, big enough to ply mules. And, and uh, but, you know, about grown. And the other man, he was, he was a young fella, and he was granddaddy. You know, by this time, done had a big family. And, but out back when they plowed mule, put on what they call a uh, uh, Dixie boy plow, and um, I don't know, a little old thing, because, you know, it looked like a big plow, but <laughs> behind the mule, they said you could, if you were working in a 20 acre field, you could. Start in, in the dark and work till dark, and then spit across what you plowed that day. Sounds about right, but um, anyway, there was three of them out there. One was uh, what they call stacking and piling, which, you know, anytime they plowing some land, they laid out, because you see that let land lay out a lot right before they had much commercial fertilizer or anything to work with, and if you didn't let the land lay fallow. Uh, sometimes as much as three or four or five years at a time, but certainly a year, two or three years at a time, it, you, you'd be messed it up and robbed it and wouldn't, wouldn't be productive. Uh, so even when they bottom, what they call bottom breaking that land, there'd be a lot of roots and briars would grow back, and sometimes bamboo or her saying other, even though you turned it up and you needed to get them things and picked up out of the way because what he did most was pick them up and pile them up and burn them or pick them up and pile them up and throw them in the hog pens or whatever. Hogs eat a lot of that stuff. And uh, this particular field, they'd had some hogs in there and there was still some in it they hadn't caught out yet. And uh, one spot of the field there on the side, on the far West Corner, there was a place, the only place there that had uh, shade trees in the edge of the field and that's where they put the, put the pump, had an old hand pump there where they watered the hogs and cows, whatever they needed water. And uh, so it come about lunchtime and they, had, they laid the plows on the side and drove them that mule up there to the shade, you know, and, you know, because you know what to do with them old plows, you lay them over on the side and then let them use them just slide along without digging in the dirt. But anyhow, they got it in and uh, watered, them, let the mules cool off, you know, then uh, I guess probably about, I don't know, they let them cool down before you watered them or you make them sick or they could find it or whatever. But they went up and hitched them in the shade and uh, loosened the harness on. And uh, 
put them some water in the trousers and all and so they could get them a good drink for to carry them back to work. And uh, usually back in, they take a good hour, sometimes a little more, uh, that part of the day to kind of rest up a little bit and give them old mules time to catch your breath and rest up and take on some water because like I say, if you water them too much, but while it's hot, uh, you can mess one up. So they was up there sitting on some old tree stumps and, and first one thing or another, uh, fixing to eat the lunches and there was a few hogs still laying around up there because that had been the main place where the hogs would gather up, you know, because it was shady and that's where the water was. So you can imagine what kind of shape the ground was there, what, you know, just like a hog pen. And uh, so they got into the lunches there and, and they said, uh, Grandma would fix Granddaddy an egg sandwich. And uh, I think Uncle, uh, my uncle said he had about a, I don't know, I don't think he said he had an egg sandwich. I think he said he had a biscuit with some syrup in it and a piece of salt meat, side meat. And I don't remember what. The other fellow probably had the same thing, and I'm sure Grandma probably fixed them for all of them. But anyhow, Granddaddy had an egg sandwich. And I guess everybody knows what egg sandwich is. Uh, back then, I've heard of people making them different ways. Basically, just two pieces of toasted bread with a uh, with an egg fried good and hard, and in between every doing good, you had some mustard on it, or maybe some mayonnaise. But and if you if everything was going real good, you might have had two fried eggs on it. Because they had the crocs there with the water in them. And they had that old pump. Maybe you couldn't always depend on them old hand pumps. If they hadn't been used regularly, they lose their prime. And sometimes it's hard to get caught back. So they had them some crocs. Which they kept them close to them, you know. For, had to get water all during the day. And uh, they said they went to eat the lunch. And granddaddy opened his little old sack there. And took his sandwich out. And it was wrapped up in a little piece of newspaper. And and uh, he went to get his sandwich out, and he dropped it in the dirt. Because you'd have to know granddaddy to get the full gist of this, but he didn't say a word. He just looked down there between his legs, and there his sandwich was laying in the, in the dirt in the hog pen. So he didn't even grunt. So he just looked down there. because you know, time was tough, in an egg sandwich. And that was all you were going to get that day that you got home. And, Still had to work, you know, till dark. And uh, see, Granddad looked down there at that sandwich between his legs. See, he took the heel of his boot and just stomped that sandwich in the dirt, good and hard, and ground it a little bit. And like I said, you'd have to know Granddad to appreciate all this, but see, he reached down at him with both hands and his fingers and kind of pick what was left of that sandwich up as gently as he could and uh, dirt and all, sand and everything. Picked it up, ate it like it was good. My uncle said, we're just crunching that dirt. And I said, was y'all laughing at him? He said, no, we wasn't laughing at him. He said, nobody say a word. He said, we went back to work in a little while. But anyhow, I got to cut loose here now. Y'all give us a share and a like and a subscribe if you will.